and welcome to Anne Marie's Workshop. My name is Anne Marie and I love to make things with joy. If you like to make things with joy, you have found the right place. Please like, subscribe, and share. So as you know, if you watched my last video, the workshop <laughs> has gone through some changes due to medical issues in the house. But uh, my dad's still sleeping a lot, so there's time to sew, and the sewing really, really makes me feel good. So one thing I found out when I uh, was in my workshop is I wanted to cut things out. <laughs> I didn't feel like sewing yet. So this is the first morning that I was like, I think I'm ready to sew. So I've got my monitor to check on my dad, plus my daughter's in the house. And I am up to my ears in scraps. So it is time for me to make some tuffets or some things or some bedrolls to use up some of these scraps that can't be utilized for something else. Now guys, in order for it to make it into my scrap pile, the pieces of fabric that I have left over after I've cut out my main items has to go through an elaborate test. First of all, if it's 100% cotton, Currently, I'm making this falling block, uh, tumbling block quilt pattern. So if it's 100% cotton and it's in the color range, I will cut out some pieces to add to this envelope. If the scrap is big enough to make the fr front or the back of an Ogden cami, then it goes in my Ogden cami <laughs> scrap bag. All right, so I also have, um, if it's rectangular, if it's in a nice silky fabric or something like that, I use it to make my these panels on my angel tops. So I will throw those in this bag. Now, if it's 100% cotton, too small to make a large uh, quilt piece, but big enough to fit across one of my muslin strips to make quilt fabric from all the different patterns. Look at that cute. Um, I will add it to my strips. And what I do with the strips is eventually you have enough to make a quilt. Okay. Now if, <laughs> if you are a um, piece of dress fabric or a pant fabric or some fabric, uh, a clothing fabric, not 100% cotton, and you are wide enough to go from one selvage to the other selvage, then you get put in my strips of fabric that I can use to make layer cake dresses and skirts. Okay. <laughs> so now, if you are big enough as a scrap, but less than, you have to be um, the scrap has to be less than one yard. Okay, so then I do these uh, handbags from Vanessa Tucker. They're new. I usually use another handbag pattern. Let me see if I can show you. Okay, so this is the small one. All right, it makes a, makes a cute little tie bag that I think if I have enough, I will include them in my um, dresser girl. Um, and also I have ended up giving them out to a lot of uh, different people, but that's what this last bag is. So after you have been as a piece of scrap fabric, after you have passed through this entire basket, you're ready for me to use you as stuffing. You might think that's a lot, Anne-Marie, but it's kind of the only way I can justify the amount of fabric I buy, the amount of things I make, because I create a lot of fabric waste. And if I, I feel great when, oh, I forgot about dolls. <laughs> I also can uh, add my scraps to dolls. Now, sometimes when you end up with a pillow or a tuffet or a cushion, it is more substantial, it is heavier, um, but it is also a great place, those old pillows that have seen better days and they've been washed, bed pillows and stuff. I like to stuff those inside of cushions and tuffets and things like that and bed rolls. And what I find is that when I make the sausage bed rolls, if they're a bit firmer, they're good to go under knees, you know, for people who have problems with sleeping, under backs. I really use them a lot now with my dad to keep him comfortable in the bed. So I'm open to make a bit more and I've got one, 
two, three, four bags of um, scrap. So it is time to uh, fluff up some of my um, cushions that have gotten a little flat, and then as well as that, make some new ones. As you may know, I've had some new events in my house, medical events in my household, and so therefore, um, I uh, we have um, a wheelchair that I had from when my mom was ill, and I got these two great cushions from Timu. I will insert a picture here. They're not too expensive, but they fit perfectly at the back of the wheelchair and perfectly at the bottom as um, as a cushion to sit on. But they needed a cover, so I traced out this pattern. This is leftover fabric from a, um, a uh, duffel that I was um, making. I haven't finished it yet, but I had this leftover fabric. I got this fabric from Walmart. It is like the type of fabric that you would use on lawn chairs. It's waterproof. It's not, well, water wicking and stuff like that. And since we're in a new era, um, I'm going to use this to make the cushions. What I did was I traced around the outside of the cushion and then I, um, because there's two of them and I ended up with this shape. The cushion has a very particular shape and um, because the cushion is thick, I also cut strips about uh, two and a half, three inches wide to go around the edge. Um, I don't know exactly the measurement, so I'm gonna sew as I go and then cut away what's left. And I'm going to include, I cut two of them. I added a half inch to the edge and this is where I'm gonna put a zipper. So it's easy to take off and take and put back on and go in the washing machine if it should need it. So. This is my new Saturday Sew segment. Um, I don't, I, I'm not gonna guarantee I'm gonna do it every Saturday, but on Saturdays, I do like to make things that have to do with the household, drapes, um, cushion covers, towels, things like that. So I'm gonna work on this and I'll show you how it turns out. Um, what I found helpful is I bought some Christmas zipper tape from Timu during the um, holidays. Um, and I was gonna use it on some holiday cushions, but actually the colors kind of work for this um, uh, cushion cover that I'm making for my dad's uh, wheelchair. Now it comes with a zipper pull so that you can decide how much you're going to need and put the um, zipper pull on. I'll show you how that works. Well, I hope it works well. There we go. See, so you fit it on the end. All done. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. Oh, guys. I'm go no, I'm going the right way. This can only fit in one way. All right, let me get back to you. Okie dokie, so I hassled with trying to get <laughs> the zipper pull on top of the zipper for quite some time. And finally, I went to YouTube University and figured out how to get it done. So this lovely YouTube creator named um, The Zipper Lady showed me how to do it. I was doing it all wrong. So let's see if I can get it right on the first go. Okay, so the zipper pull is pointed down. This is the back and this is the front. So first thing I'm gonna do, if I can get a hold on it, that's what happens when you have really big hands, is I'm gonna slide this down on this longer side. Okay, if you noticed, I clipped one side longer than the other side. So that's the key to it. All right, so then I'm gonna take the smaller side and slide it in here. And then let's see if the magic works for you all on camera. Then you wiggle it down. Sorry guys, hold on. You put it in on this side, hold it by, you might have to do this a couple times guys, but it does work, it does work. <laughs> 
All right, put it in on this side. Okay, hold on to it and wiggle it. Wiggle it down. <gasps> there it is, it worked. All right, so there you go. You have your zipper. Now you're gonna have that little bubble in there, but that's okay. You can work that out. And then of course, there's the catch to put at the bottom. Okay, all right. Now I'm not sure why I didn't put the zipper pull inside of the side pieces, like at the bottom of the um, cushion. I'm not exactly sure why I did that, but I don't have any more material, so I can't correct it now. All right, so I'm going to measure how much I need. So let's see. Let's see, I'm gonna give myself maybe an inch on either side and that's where I'm going to cut my zipper that I just put on here and that's what I'm going to use now I have I had run one two three of these zippers onto this so I'm just gonna move these further down and make another zipper let's come back a bit that matches this one. And I'm gonna put the catches on the back to keep it from running off. But if it runs off, I'm not alarmed because the zipper lady has shown me how to do this. Okay, so now I have two zippers for the two cushions. Now, I have brought my cushion for the chair upstairs. Isn't it nice? This is a Timu buy, guys. I'll put the link below. I'm not a affiliate or anything, but this is, you know, if you have someone who has a wheelchair, this is a good size. Okay. So, but I want to include on my cushion two ties on both sides. One to tie to the top of the wheelchair where the handles are and another two ties to tie to the back of the seat so that the, the um, cushions don't shift around. So I'm gonna have to uh, check in my scrap bin and get some material, or I might have material left over from the side pieces. So let me see what I need, see if I can find any scraps left to make the ties. I lucked out in my scrap bin and I found material to make straps. I'm going to make four straps to, um, to use on my uh, cushion for the wheelchair. And this is my final project. I added ties to attach to the wheelchair so the cushions wouldn't shift. One for the back and one for the seat. I really like how they came out. This fabric is a lot more, um, because of the zipper, I can take these off and wash them if, if necessary. And um, as I said, this fabric is outdoor um, fabric, so it's kind of stain resistant, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Alrighty, so this was a Saturday, so where I worked on something that was needed in the house. I hope you liked it. Alrighty, we'll see you soon. Take care. So yourself happy. Thank you.